Hello my friends, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are going to be painting this um, like winter scene of a bird. At least that's what I think is going to happen, but we'll find out when we actually start painting because things oftentimes do not go to plan either by accident or because I get an idea. But we're going to start out with our piece of paper in landscape position and I've taped the borders of mine so since we're doing the wet and wet technique and we're covering the whole thing I don't want it to go over the edges of the piece of paper because that causes like that buckling that we don't want. So what I'm going to do is cover the whole piece of paper in a layer of um, in a layer of water, but I've tinted mine like oh that's a little too much brown, but just a little bit of brown, so I can see where I painted and where I have not. So, and the reason why we're choosing brown as that color is because we're going to be adding these like bokeh. I don't know if I'm saying that right. B o k e h that word, bokeh um, orbs to make it kind of like a fun background. So just make sure it's nice and evenly spread out, that there's no water pooling anywhere. And I'm gonna grab my size 14 by Grumbacher. Um, and I'm gonna pick up some like dark, dark brown, even black is fine. Uh, and I'm gonna drop it just in random places. You want a little bit of water on your paintbrush so that it does actually spread out. Actually, I like this tapping thing. When I tap my brush and some of it comes off, I, I like that because they're all slightly different um, sizes, these orbs. And you want them to spread out and kind of do their thing uh, at this stage, when I do this kind of effect, I look at it and it looks really spidery and I don't, I don't like how it looks. Sometimes it works out. Most of the time it works out like it spreads out and then dries really nicely. But sometimes I give it a little bit of assistance. Um, like right now, I don't think this is going the route that I want it to go. So I am just going to go in with my paintbrush and smooth out the edges just a tad um, to minimize that spider look, which I am not a fan of. And I'm just rinsing my brush in between each orb, I guess. Uh, so today, I was really, you know those days when you're just not really in the mood to paint? Um, that today was one of those days and I was, I didn't have the reason, I just didn't have any inspiration. I didn't know what I was going to paint and usually throughout the week. So what I do is, uh, now since, since having my baby, I have started to paint, um, four tutorials worth a week. So basically two weeks worth. And so I need to paint four paintings and throughout the week. I'll like screenshot inspiration and stuff like that. But sometimes I either don't have time to be on the internet screenshotting inspiration or I just don't see anything inspiring or I just, you know, am not inspired myself to begin with. So today or this week was one of those weeks so I didn't really know what to paint. And that's where we are now. But I saw this um, this very nice photo actually on a local group, like local to where I live. Somebody took a photograph and that inspired this painting. Um, and we'll see if it looks anything like it. So I'm just taking like, uh, a different brown. It has less black in it and I'm just adding that as well just to, you know, vary it up a little bit. Um, 
I usually like these kinds of backgrounds. Like typically I've done much more colorful versions of backgrounds like this. Like I, I did a bird, I think it was a cardinal and I dropped red dots everywhere and it just looked so, so pretty when it was dried up. Um, so I'm hoping that this will give off that same sort of effect. Just do keep in mind when you're doing this that the watercolor, when it dries, it does dry to be a little bit less opaque than, you know, when it's wet. I kind of, it kind of looks like stars. I'm tempted to not make the edges nice and rounded. I don't know. I'll think about it while I'm picking up some gray and just adding that as well. So for those that loyally watch every tutorial, I've been talking in previous tutorials frequently about this rent, like little reno project that I had going on. I wanted to redo the wall behind our wood stove to be like this fake brick wall. Um, because right now it's just not a very, it's, it's like drywall that's cracking and sticking out and it doesn't look very nice the way it is now. And I feel like this fake brick wall would add a wonderful touch to the whole space because we have like one giant room for the kitchen and living room. So it would be like a nice centerpiece to it. And Home Depot sells these fake brick panels that they look quite realistic because there is texture to it. It's not just like a flat board. And, um, and it, like it's, it's just one giant panel, like a four by eight foot panel. So you just stick that on your wall and you're good to go. And so I've been waiting for a contractor to do this. It's been over a month now. So I'm growing increasingly frustrated. First, like we waited forever to get a quote. And then, yeah, it's just, it's been, I am very close to just throwing the towel in and just either doing it myself or I don't know. Um, sorry. So I think I'm just going to leave this as it is and let this completely dry. And then we can start adding the details that are really going to make this pop. And oh, you know what? I just realized we should add some red because we're going to be adding berries to this. And it would be nice if there were little splashes of red for the berries. The thing is, I don't know where these berries are going to be. And we want to splotch these red accents where we're going to be painting the berries so you might want to pencil it in first like where you think you're going to paint the berry whatever just put the red wherever you want uh i'm sure it'll look nice regardless so this yes so in a previous tutorial i think this is last year's tutorial where i did this beautiful cardinal and it was a similar background there was a lot more red in the background and we put those red splotches where we thought that the berries were going to be. And it ended up looking really, really nice. So hopefully this will also look nice, but we're gonna let this totally dry and then we shall move on to the next step. Okay, so this should be completely dry. What I wanna do now, I'm grabbing a pencil. It's just a regular pencil. And I want to sketch out the branches. So we're painting branches here that are going to have red berries coming off of them. And I'm hoping, this might change, but I'm hoping to paint like a, a little bird as a centerpiece, I guess, to this painting. But we'll see how it goes because I'm not really confident in my bird painting abilities. Um, so you can paint your branches however you like. The reason why I'm, I, I don't usually pencil out my branch, I just like to go where my paintbrush goes. 
but I'm doing it this time because of these red splotches that I have. So I want the, the branches to kind of go in those directions so I could paint the red berries in the general area of those red splotches. So I'll have like one branch coming down like this and I should have went a little bit above that but then I'll have maybe another one coming down like this there'll be a branch going out like this and like this uh, maybe one like there and have another one maybe coming down like this maybe one like this something like that and then I'm going to grab I've been trying out these new brushes so far and I'm not I haven't been that big of a fan of them because they're not as taut, I guess, as the ones that I use regularly. Um, like when I when I press on this, it's like there's more resistance than when I press on this. Like this is very loose. Probably not using the correct terminology, but. It's just, uh, it might be that I'm just used to using a particular kind of paintbrush and that's why I'm not enjoying this new paintbrush. But I'm just being honest because I don't want to be one of those people that just promotes things because, because they get <clears throat> paid for it or something. I will always be honest about my thoughts on a product. Um, so I'm going to try the brush for this. Um, typically I would use like my quadruple zero or my double zero Windsor & Newton for uh, deciduous branches. But... So I'm taking like brown mixed with black yeah, I'm sorry, Grabby. I do not like your paintbrushes. I've used these for a couple tutorials and I always end up going back to just my regular ones. They're just they they don't they don't suit my painting style. I'm sure they are they're probably really great for people that are used to like dollar store brushes then obviously it's a huge upgrade but um but what the heck was I gonna say <laughs> oh but the brushes that I use like I purchased them at a uh an art supply store that and they were expensive brushes like they weren't cheap brushes so you would I would hope that they perform better than, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't like these brushes, but you might. I'm still using them because what I do like about them is they hold more water. And so I can paint the entire branch in one brush stroke. I don't have to reload on paint. And that's something that I lack in my regular brushes. Although it might just be that I am not using the correct brush because if you compare, like, where is it? I really like using my quadruple zero for details. And if you compare these two, obviously this one's gonna hold, this one is gonna hold more water and therefore you can paint a longer brush stroke, but you don't have as much control, or at least I don't. 
It might just be that I need time to get used to these brushes because, you know, they do get, like, I already find that painting these subsequent branches, it's a lot easier than these two. So I don't want to say anything too prematurely here if you are interested in trying these out. I'm just letting you know my first impression. Um, so I wanted to paint my bird here somewhere. I really am not confident in this bird. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Uh, but I have to try. I have to try new things. So this bird, I'm going to go perhaps a little bit closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I need to sharpen this pencil. Um, but I'm going to have his claws kind of in this area. Not his claws, what are they called? Wow, my vocabulary is lacking. And it's going to be a ball that we're going to paint. And his little head's going to be here. It's going to be all like fluffed up because it's cold and winter time. And the little tail feathers are going to come out like this. It's going to be something like that. We'll just paint it and hope for the best. So I'm going to pull out, I'm not experimenting with brushes for this. I'm taking my quadruple zero tried and true Windsor and Newton for this one. And I'm going to start out with a very light color. That is the intention at least so that if I make a mistake, I can kind of remedy it. Um, and Let's just try painting this guy. Whoops. La 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 la. Da, 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 da. So first I'm just filling him in with color. Uh, actually, no, I am going to just, so I think this is called a golden finch. That's what I'm attempting to paint. And they have these beautiful yellowish tones on the upper part of them, but I'm I'm not following like an anatomic like I'm not painting an anatomically correct bird here, so this might look absolutely nothing like a golden finch. Um, and then we want tail feathers and I want to paint the uh, wing part a little bit darker this doesn't look too too bad honestly better than I was expecting but this is totally not the angle that I wanted to paint this bird. Like I want it to face a totally different direction. Um, it has a bit of black. Oh, that was too much. That was certainly too much, yet I keep going. I keep going with the black. Mistake. I wanted it to be a little more natural looking and less boxy, but Birds are not my forte, guys. They are not my forte. Forego the bird if you do not. Like, we could have just flicked another splotch there and called it a bird. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I also wish I made all these branches a bit thicker, but what are you going to do? I am going to just go back. Uh, let that dry a little bit because we have to add the beak and the eye eyes eye I think there's just gonna be one eye uh, but I do want to make these branches a 
teeny weeny bit darker because I want to obviously add snow to the branches. I think that's what always makes them look extra nice and and uh, I don't really know what I'm trying to say. So this tutorial, I think this is going to be one of the, the last few kind of winterish tutorials because it's going to be released in March, I think. And after that, it kind of starts, we start moving into spring. I feel like I didn't paint very much winter themed stuff lately. Um, Maybe because like half of it was taken up by Christmas. I don't know. But I also feel the need to like paint some figures or things rather than just landscapes constantly just to vary it up. Also painting things sometimes is a little bit easier for me. Like it's a good change to break up from all of the more complicated uh, landscapes and whatnot. So I'm painting this like a week before Christmas and every year, this is going to be our eighth year, but we started a little tradition. Um, my husband and I, the first year we met, of building a gingerbread house. And each year they become more and more elaborate, or at least we try to make them like more complicated and fancy and whatnot. And so right now he is just in the other room kind of coming up with the blueprint. He's the engineer behind our gingerbread houses and I just execute. I make I make the dough and I decorate. I'm the interior designer, if you will. Um, yeah, and this year, I'm pretty excited. Like, we found over the year, we always thought it... Over the first, I would say, three or four years, we thought bigger is better. And so we just made, kept making it bigger every year, but they didn't look that much more amazing because it, it it really is the detail in the decorating that makes the difference in gingerbread houses. So each year we've kind of been scaling back in size, but just adding more layers to the houses, if you know what I mean. Uh, and that has really amped up the complexity of them. Last year I entered a... Uh, local gingerbread house competition building competition i totally i, I mean i'm i want to be modest and perhaps you could say that i'm biased but everyone that i showed I, I got second place but everyone that i showed like mine compared to the winner they were like how did you not win and i was thinking the same thing and i think there was some bias there in the judging because the winner was like a local business, I think. And I think that they were expecting to win because it was like a creative business. But mine was way better. I want to be modest, but come on. Like, if you guys saw it, I don't... I might just like do it like a boop and post what mine looked like so you guys get an idea. And then the winning one was just like a regular small gingerbread house. It was just like nicely decorated. But mine was like the whole shop front. And yeah, that was a bit disappointing. I will not lie. Okay, this tutorial is getting way too long for what it is. So I actually had somebody comment like, I don't care about things going on in your life. Just talk about the tutorial. I thought that was a little mean, but... I guess I understand. You're not here to hear about my life story. Um, so 
in previous tutorials where I paint these berries, I kind of paint like these individual, like you can see each individual ball for the berry. But here I'm going to try more of these clusters. Um, because I want to paint snow on top of them, obviously. And it will look more snowy if there is like more mass to paint the snow on if you know what I mean this you can maybe think of this as sumac it's not but so yeah I'm kind of painting these little clusters and I will probably do that like flicking thing where I flick paint onto the, uh, like on top of here so that the little berries look a little bit more natural. I will probably do that as well. So as I said, I'm painting this a week before Christmas and it's just this week and that like the next, I would say 10 days are going to be so hectic um just like and the main reason I mean they're hectic by themselves but throw like a, a three-month-old baby in the mix and it just becomes even more complicated but um like tomorrow crossing my fingers I would not be surprised if they don't show up but the contractor is supposed to come and do that wall that brick wall I was talking about um and then but that's supposed to be over the course of like three days and I don't really understand why because I've done quite a bit of DIYing at our house like we did our own kitchen um we uh like I built the chicken coop completely on my own um we built our wood sh wood stack um like I've done a lot of di like DIYing in terms of renovations and building things. I built my own workbench. Like I built the chest that's in our house. So I'm pretty handy when it comes to DIYing stuff like that. And this is child's play. Like this putting up this wall in comparison to doing our kitchen, for instance. But the reason why we wanted to hire someone out is because we have a baby now. And it just... Uh, like we... Um, put up this I'll call it a backsplash or like a splash pad thing behind our sink like the wall behind our sink so that we wouldn't have to continuously like be militant about drying behind the sink um, and that took like six hours because of the baby because you know she constantly needed one like somebody's attention and so, and a lot of it was like a two person job, like someone had to hold something while I was cutting or blah, blah, blah. And so um, after that experience, we're like, we'll just hire somebody to uh, do this brick wall. And, but honestly, I totally could have done it by myself. It's so easy. You just have to frame out this one section, um, put a piece of drywall up, bada bing, bada boom, put the panel, the one four by eight panel, and you're and you're done. Like it's so simple. Um, but we are where we are. Anyway, so here I am doing that flicking thing where I'm just adding some more berries. I'm not really a fan, yet I keep going. Um, yeah, okay. I'm just going to take the red off of my bird. Is that... I think I should have just left the red because I kind of mess that up a little bit oh well I'm just gonna paint on the um, beak now so I'm gonna switch to my quadruple zero 
So yes, as I was saying, um, hold on, let me close up here so you can see the beak. I'm painting the beak, it's just a triangle that you're basically painting. So we have this head and it kind of ends in the beak. Like so. And then the eye is going to be here and it kind of goes like that. And then I'll touch it up in a second, but I just want to also paint the whatever that is, the claws, the I can't believe I don't know what that's called. The feet of the bird, what are they called? You guys are so good at this, at telling me what things are called. I'm just having a complete blank right now in terms of claws? That doesn't sound right. Talons? <laughs> um, so I'm gonna fill that in with brown. I have to darken, oh man, this is not a triangle at all. Let me take a piece of paper to dry that out. That worked really well, actually. And try that one more time. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? Yeah, so the next three days are basically this contractor's coming and doing the brick wall. And then, and then we leave to my parents' house for Christmas for like several days. I'm gonna wait till this completely dries. I'm actually just gonna take a hair dryer to this so the berries dry as well. Okay, so that's largely dry. I can see some red berries that are still not dry, but in classic Julia fashion, I am not waiting because I am impatient. So, um, I'm gonna, hmm. I guess I'll just finish the beak first since that should that area should be dry. Um, I'm gonna take brown instead of black, I think, this time. Um, or I could just leave it the way that it is. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, so as I was saying before I interrupted myself, we are going to my parents' house for Christmas. We're gonna be there for several days. But while we're there, it's like, there is so much to do. Um, like even just driving there, we have three stops. And it's a on, a, on a good day, it takes us just under four hours to drive straight from here to my parents' house. But with a baby where we're gonna have to stop at least once to feed her, it's going to be like an over five hour journey. Um, and what else? What else did I want to say about that? This eye is really not working out for me. <laughs> I am not good at birds, guys. I just wanted something fancy in this, but whatever you get you get the gist this is a bird you can see the beak we're just gonna leave it like that um no we're not i can't help it i have to fix this i'm gonna darken the yellow part i think um but yeah i have to pick up stop and pick up beeswax I have to stop and pick up my mom's Christmas gift because I, I think I mentioned this in actually in an earlier video there was only one store left in the entirety of Ontario that had this one board game that my mom is a huge fan of and she plays it with her friends and um I was like what the heck how is this so hard to find and conveniently it was located at a store that is on our way to their house so I have to stop by there like I already bought it so I just need to pick it up and they were nice enough to hold it for me because I bought it almost a month ago and uh what was I gonna say uh 
so the beeswax, the game. Oh, we also bought a this beautiful old um, solid wood hutch buffet combo. And we bought that. It's also on our way to my parents' house. Um, and so we have to first stop to take a look at it to see if I actually want it because the pictures don't do justice. And then if we do like it, then my husband has to, we have to drive because it's about an hour from where my parents live. It is on the way, but it is an hour. So he has to drive, we have to drive back to my parents' house, switch cars because our car will not, it doesn't fit. Um, like the piece won't fit in our car. So he has to switch cars and drive all the way an hour back and pick this thing up and then drive back again. And amongst all that, my cousin is coming to visit that same day. And we both have a dentist appointment, all with a three and a half month old. So this is going to be, that first day is gonna be stressful in itself, but then the next day my best friend is coming to visit. She's coming to my parents' house. And uh, that'll be fun. She's going to bring her baby who is nine months old. So the future besties are going to meet. And um, uh, what else was I going to say? I don't remember what I was going to say. It's just a very busy time, but I mean, Christmas always is, right? I don't know if I, I don't think I said this, but we are now taking white acrylic paint and adding snow, snowy details to our branches. This is optional. You certainly don't have to do this. And I've said this before, but you, if you don't have acrylic paint, um, one of those whiteout markers or whiteout pens would work perfectly for lining um, thin deciduous branches with a little layer of snow. So that is an option for you as well. You also don't have to do all the branches. Um, stop wherever you are comfortable with. But I love adding snowy details to paintings, I think. I think it really adds something extra to a painting. Somebody wrote in a comment, I don't remember what video it was, but they were like, know when to stop. <laughs> like, okay, that's, thank you. I know that sometimes I go too far with my paintings. Like I just keep going and adding and adding and adding, but I can't help it. It's sometimes like most of the time it works out sometimes it's a little overdone so here is what i was talking about earlier when i said i want clusters of berries because it'll be so much easier to just add like splotchy snow on top of these berries um without having to add snow to each individual berry if you know what i mean like it's just a clump of snow on top Like so, and here as well, and I'll just add some one individual ones as well. I feel like our bird should have some snow as well, because Everything else has snow, so why doesn't he have snow? I don't know. I don't know if that made a difference. But I think I'm just going to cap it at that because we could keep going and going and going with a bunch of different details and whatnot. But I'm peeling my tape off here so that uh, we have our nice clean edges. And that's basically it.
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.